We are live, I think. Good morning, everybody. I'm Nikos Morandis from Hotelier Academy, Greece. And today we will speak in English because we have our first international Hotelier webinar. Let me introduce Hotelier Academy at first. Hotelier Academy, it's an online educational blog that we create uh, educational content for hoteliers. So we try to dig in in the new trends. We try to get information about technology operation and we create amazing articles, free articles that help hoteliers to develop their properties. Last year, after the COVID spread out, we have decided to create something that will boost the hotelier's psychology because it's a very, very hard period. So we started the first live webinars in collaboration with the best hotel professionals around the world. Uh, but it was in Greek because uh, as many of you, you know that we are based in Greece and uh, we created Greek content. But after running two rounds of uh, free hotel webinars and gathering more than 200,000 views in our content, we decided to expand and to create some English, English versions uh, sessions. So today we are happy to welcome our first international speaker, Christophe, that will talk about vegan food in hotels. You know, gastronomy is very important for the travelers and uh, always they are looking for new uh, experiences. Vegan food is a huge trend. If you analyze the, uh, the searches in Google, you will find a great number of searches that are looking for vegan food. So we think that it's time to explore this field. So I would like to welcome Christoph Steiner uh, that will talk about vegan food in hotels and that he will uh, share with us all his knowledge. Welcome, Christoph. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Nikos. And thank you, everyone who is watching us today, because this is such an incredible honor for me. I'm very happy that uh, I can be here, that we can be together in these crazy times when the whole world is in lockdown. And I do believe that all these online events that uh, we can continue our lives and continue to educate ourselves and continue to feel the togetherness. These are the things that are um, giving us hope and they are reminding us that there is a time after all this and we are going to have to prepare for that time so uh, the hotel scene is a very exciting scene uh, I, I've been into it for quite a long time as a vegan advisor and uh, uh, working in collaboration with, with hoteliers and one of the things that I've been always hearing was that uh, this is such a brilliant idea but we are so busy this season, so we, we would have to postpone it to next season. And this goes on and on and on. So I know that many of the hoteliers at the moment are really desperate and miserable about the lockdown and about not having tourism. But this year is an incredible opportunity for hoteliers to kind of like base something that will bring them revenue, probably even this year, but definitely in the upcoming years. And the most important aspect for me of this is actually about food. I love food. I'm talking about food. I'm making food. I'm helping other people to make food. And uh, we are going to talk today a little bit about why vegan food is important in hospitality business. What is vegan food exactly? Why people are becoming vegan? why hoteliers should consider at all some crazy vegans who are coming to the hotel and they are not happy with the eggs and they are not happy with the milk. Why? Well, the answers are all here and I would like you to lay back comfortably. Don't take it as a, as a school class uh, lecture. We are here friends together and we are just going to have a little chat and uh, try to keep an open mind. I wonder how many of you are actually vegans I wonder how many of you are starting to think nowadays that there is so much talk about veganism and about plant-based diet. That maybe it's the right time to try to a little bit lay off meat for a while and to give the guests and to yourselves a bit of a variety. 
uh, and it's coming in a very, very good time actually now uh, here in Greece, because uh, many people here observe the fasting before Easter, and actually many, many people um, for religious reasons, traditional reasons, they avoid eating milk and meat and eggs at this time of the year. So I think for the Greeks, it's gonna be a little bit even easier because of this, because here the, the fasting food, the nistissimo food is quite a big thing. All right, so let's get going then. My name is Christoph Steiner. I was born in Hungary and um, I actually thought I'm gonna live my life in Hungary when I was in my uh, late teenage years, early twenties, I started off as a TV presenter and uh, I was running a live uh, lifestyle show on television with lots of interviews. And uh, quite often we had um, guests who were talking about uh, food. We were sometimes making uh, dishes in the studio as you would do. And um, I started to become very interested in eating because I thought food is an incredible way to bring people together. I always thought that um, whenever I saw a conflict between minorities or between people who are thinking differently about politics or whatever, when they sit down next to a nice big table, flooded with delicious food, so suddenly all the misunderstandings are gone. And um, I love this. I love the way food creates a community. Um, long story short, Eventually I left the television, I moved to London, I studied creative uh, writing there and as a hobby I started to make uh, vegan muffins for a local organic coffee place. I turned vegan 12 years ago, I'm going to talk about this a little bit later, why and uh, what were my motivations. And uh, in London, my muffins and my cakes were going so well that eventually coffee places started to sort of request uh, discussion with me to talk about what to bring on the menu. Okay, so now we have cakes, but we need a vegan sandwich. Okay, but the sandwich is not enough. We should have a pasta dish or uh, eventually a, a curry or, you know, you can expand it to so many different levels. And once again, I felt like I need to widen my horizon and I moved to Tel Aviv. And Tel Aviv was already in 2009 sort of a vegan um, a paradise. Uh, the the vegan movement is very, very strong in Tel Aviv. By estimations, about 20% of the Tel Avivians are actually close to being uh, vegan. And um, there I continued my, uh, my self-education. I didn't only make muffins and cakes. I also made uh, three meal uh, set dishes that I was on my bike every day. And I was bicycling all around Tel Aviv and bringing my dishes to uh, offices, universities, families. And then one day, um, a food blogger from Hungary, who I appreciate and love very much, Sofia Mautner, uh, she visited me in Tel Aviv. And I served her some of the dishes I made. And she looked at me and said, you're insane that you're not doing this professionally. And I took her advice. I published my cookbook. And uh, the rest is history. Um, I'm having a wonderful time teaching cooking classes, working together with restaurants and hotels in many different ways, which later on we are going to talk about, because ultimately this is not about me. This is about you guys and about how you can take veganism, which is maybe a little bit of a far away thing, a far, far away thing from you, and bring it a little bit closer to you and see what's the reason to do so. So my first and most important aspect that I need to tell you even before specifically talking about veganism is do not be afraid of change. Change is very scary, especially in the professional scene. You can make a change. You can say, okay, I'm going to try to go vegan and see what happens. It, if it's only for you, if it's just for you, and uh, you know it doesn't uh, take any risk. But if you are going to implant something in your menu to train your team, if you're going to put money in advertising that your hotel is vegan friendly, obviously you are making 
quite a big change. But I just want to remind all of you that how many big changes the hotel industry went through in the previous decades. I still remember times when um, people used to say, we're not going to have a Wi-Fi in, a, in the hotel. This is so silly. Like we have the computers downstairs in the lobby. If somebody really needs the computer, they will just go down to the executive lounge. And now look around. Is it possible for a hotel not to have Wi-Fi? Obviously no, unless it's a sort of a nomad hotel, a, a spiritual getaway without Wi-Fi, which is also an amazing concept. But let's get back to veganism, okay? Do not be afraid of it. It's not gonna hurt you. It's not gonna be difficult. It's not gonna be expensive. And it's definitely not going to take anything away from you. There is no reason why not to go with it, okay? Plant-based meals are definitely not complicated. Most people are thinking that when we are talking about plant-based food, we are talking about tofu, seitan, um, mock meats. We are talking about uh, having to bring in special ingredients that nobody ever heard of until now, the chia seeds and the goji berries and all the superfoods and it is an option, obviously. And I'm not going to badmouth any of these ingredients because there is nothing wrong with them. The problem is that unfortunately, mainstream media and especially non-vegans somehow perceive veganism as a, as a new age diet that, is, uh, that can be only satisfied by using all these different substitutes. And I personally, as a vegan for over 12 years, and as a vegan professional who is writing cookbooks, teaching classes, and consulting with hotels and restaurants about their menus, I can very honestly say that there are more vegan dishes on your menu at the moment than you would ever imagine. Maybe they need a little bit of an adjustment. Maybe they are really one ingredient away from being completely vegan. But it's, it's really unbelievable the range of vegan dishes that one can uh, easily put on a menu with very, very slight changes. Let's talk a little bit first about the Greek cuisine because we are here in Greece. And uh, anyway, I think that Greek cuisine is something that needs to be uh, paid attention on internationally. As I said, I lived in Tel Aviv before, I lived in London before, and I lived in Hungary. And when we thought of Greek food, Everybody used to think about souvlagi or gyros or tzatziki, basically. And when we moved here to Greece two years ago, we were shocked that in every single taverna you go to, you have about 10 different vegan dishes on the menu. And some of them they consider as starters. But anyway, here in Greece, we don't do starters. We bring everything to the table and it's like, one big brunch and everybody is sharing the food and it's so much fun. And just to mention a few of these dishes, there is the gigantes, for example, the giant white beans in a spiced tomato sauce that is baking in the oven. There is the briam, which is the Greek's uh, ratatouille sort of delicious dish with zucchini and aubergine and uh, tomatoes. Well, there is uh, obviously spanakopita, which is uh, kind of like uh, you would know maybe the burek from Turkey or the burakas from the, the Middle East, quite similar filo pastry with spinach. And if it's without feta cheese, it's already vegan. And the line goes on and on and on. And we don't have to get stuck with the Greek cuisine because we can move to, for example, Italian cuisine. And we will see that most of the antipasti is 100% vegan. The pastas, the fresh pastas, easily can be made without any eggs. And then you can have a pesto without the Parmesan cheese. And then you can have a dressing of pumpkin, a dressing of sweet potato. There is really no reason to think why the vegan food is complicated. And what I usually suggest is, uh, just to get a bit more familiar with main ingredients that are going to help you on this journey. 
Let's talk a little bit about why people are usually going vegan. Well, some of the assumption is that people are going vegan because they want to become more healthy. Can be a truth, but these people are actually going on a plant-based diet. Some people are thinking that people are going vegan because they want to protect the environment and they want to live an ecologically friendly life. This is also a point of view and vegan food can be eco-friendly, but it's not, not necessarily true because, you know, some people could say, okay, I'm going vegan for the, the world's well-being and then they are going to order avocados from uh, South America, which we have delicious avocados, by the way, here in Greece. Uh, and uh, some people are going to say, uh, okay, I'm only going to eat from now on cashew nuts and quinoa. And this is vegan, but it's not sustainable vegan. So then again, this is a plant-based decision. And then there is the third decision, which is actually the vegan decision. Veganism is an animal rights movement. So people who go vegan, they go vegan for the animals. All the rest of it is a benefit. All the, the rest of it is a bit of an extra. And you can be a, a, a bad vegan also uh, regarding your health. Because for example, just uh, somebody going vegan is not going to take care of nutrition. You can be a vegan who is unfortunately eating uh, uh, fries and crisps and snacks and uh, take out food from uh, not the most uh, nutritious type. And uh, then you're gonna eventually find that uh, you're missing things, that your body is not functioning properly. But this is not going to be the fault of the vegan diet. This is the fault of not eating a colorful enough meal. So what I say is that, yes, it's true. Veganism is an animal rights movement. I'm vegan for the animals, 100%. I turned vegan 13 years ago because I had a little dog who I carried everywhere with me. He was a Chinese crested, the one with no hair. Probably you know them. And um, we were sitting in a restaurant. He was sitting on my lap. And uh, it was St. Martin's Day in Hungary, which a day when everybody uh, orders goose. So the goose leg was arriving to my table and my little dog, Özge, was sitting on my lap. And as I was about to stick my fork and knife in the goose leg, I looked down to my dog and the two legs looked nearly identical, the size of it, the shape of it, the color of it. And then I thought to myself, why is it that some animals we are protecting and uh, if this dog is coughing I'm running to the vet to to save him but in the same time we would order a dish and after this for quite a while I was still just contemplating and I was thinking what should I do how should I do it and then eventually it was one big decision and I told to myself if I'm going to suffer if this is going to become uh, a misery for me because I was quite a hedonistic person. I always loved to eat and I didn't want to deny joy from myself, obviously. So I said, then I'm going to stop. But surprisingly, it was never a problem. I could continue living my hedonistic life and to continue being vegan. So this is why what I believe in, I do sometimes talk about why animal farming industrial and animal farming is not good and how um, the animals are suffering in this system and also about how it's not really good for our planet and also not so good for us because these animals who are really uh, stuck together in, uh, in these boxes, they are, they are unfortunately not the healthiest. And so people who eat them clearly won't be that healthy as well but this is not my way of inspiring. You can find lots of videos, motivational talks, documentaries about this in your own time. I don't push people to do this. What I do is I'm bringing a range of incredibly colorful vegan dishes and I'm going to show that by the end of your meal, you're going to say, even though you're not vegan, 
food like this could come to my table every day, I'd have no problem being vegan. And this sentence I've been hearing all the time from everyone, really. So this is where hotel industry and veganism connects, that vegans also like to have fun, believe it or not. <laughs> so hotels are offering fun. Guests are going to hotels because they are going to feel comfortable. And vegans also like to feel comfortable. So let's learn how we're going to satisfy those vegans. Some people are still thinking that veganism is sort of a, a sidekick, something that uh, is still just getting validated. But the truth is that it's very much here. Nowadays, there are um, lots of uh, travel agencies. There are uh, different uh, type of hospitality businesses that are uh, specializing on vegans, or if they don't specialize on vegans, they offer packages for vegans because there is a very realistic uh, crowd that is, is here for you. They are here, they are knocking on your hotel's door and they are wanting to come in. But if you don't give them what they eat and what makes them feel comfortable in their belief system, they are not going to come in. And first of all, they are bringing you a new crowd. Second, they are going to advertise your hotel because they will be so happy that they are getting good vegan food at your place. And third, they are about to spend money in your hotel. So clearly, let's allow them to come in, okay? Let's look at, first of all, the most important thing what a person goes to a hotel uh, for. I mean, me, <laughs> breakfast. <laughs> I love having breakfast in a hotel. Sometimes when I go to bed, no matter how comfortable is the bed, like this one here behind me, I'm sure it's amazing. Uh, I close my eyes and I say, I can't wait for the breakfast tomorrow. And uh, this clearly can only happen at places where, where we have variety. Sometimes it's a little bit disappointing because it can happen that a vegan calls up a hotel, gets to the reception and says, do you have vegan uh, options for the breakfast? And the receptionist is not trained well to answer this question or she thinks or he thinks that this is not um, uh, such an important question and says, yeah, yeah, of course, we always have some cut vegetables, we'll be fine. And then the guest arrives and goes down to the breakfast hall and has to face it that there is not even a plant-based milk for the coffee or that, yeah, he could eat like a slice of bread, uh, which is <laughs> okay, but there is so much more we can offer in a vegan breakfast and it's really, really not complicated. So look at my uh, picture for a moment. Uh, this is a photo from uh, one of uh, our cookbooks. And um, this is not eggs, what you see on the picture. And next to it, that is not bacon. So what is it then? Anyone can guess? <laughs> I don't hear you. Okay, I'm gonna tell you. So this is a vegan omelet, which is made of chickpea flour. Yes. What is chickpea flour? Some people would may ask, they would probably say, I don't have the power to order special flour from a special vegan store, but this is definitely not true. Chickpea flour is all around everywhere, especially you can find it in Indian stores. Some of the organic stores are selling it as well, but in like 200 grams of, uh, of bags, while in the Indian stores, you can get them by the kilo and they are very, very cheap. It's a very much traditional ingredient the Italians are making the farinata with it, which is sort of like a chickpea flatbread. I'm actually swallowing me because I'm so wanting to eat it right now. Uh, and uh, the French people are making as well sort of a, a thick pancake with it, which is called soca. And uh, what we are doing, it's very simple. Think about it when you're ordering your eggs and you think, what if I order too much? What if I didn't order enough? What if they will go off? What if they are not the best? What if I ordered from a sustainable farm where there are happy chickens and they are screwing me over and it's not really a happy egg? What, 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 what? Well, here is your answer. You can take chickpea flour, 
mix it with a little bit of water, flavor it up. You can use turmeric. You can use, there is actually a black salt that is very rich in sulfur, and it actually has the flavor and the scent of eggs. It's so confusing. I actually do it sometimes that I prepare in a jar an omelette mix ahead with all the spices and herbs, and then I give it as a present to friends. And then at home, all they need to do is to mix it with the water, get it to sort of like um, when you whisk the egg for an omelette to that texture, and you fry it on a frying pan, just like you would do with an omelette. You can have a vegan omelette station in your breakfast hall where people can decide, I would like onion, pepper, and aubergine in my omelette. It's brilliant. And the bacon, what you see here, this one specifically, is actually made of the rice paper, what they are using for uh, spring rolls in uh, Asian cuisine. Uh, but you can do it with so many different things. Uh, this is one of the easiest ways and um, it's, it's also very much sustainable and easy. We are um, soaking the uh, rice sheets in a marinade that is with smoked paprika or, um, or liquid smoke with some paprika, with a tiny little bit of soy sauce, with a few drops of mustard, and um, I'm always adding a little bit of natural syrup, may it be uh, uh, maple, agave, dates, or here in Greece, we are very often using uh, just uh, the um, juice of the grapes before they would use it for the wine. They are brilliant for cooking, for caramelizing onions, for example. So this is really super, super simple. And um, you won't have to worry uh, about the dish going off at all. Let's talk a little bit about more variety of food. So cheese, yeah, I know. We all love cheese. I love cheese, honestly. And how can I say it as a vegan? Am I a bad vegan for saying I love cheese? Am I a, a chigan? They call chigan the cheating vegans. And secretly I'm eating cheese uh, next to my uh, refrigerator in the middle of the night. No, I'm saying that I can love cheese and be a vegan. Because when we are talking about cheese, we're not talking about, hmm, I'm dying to have a slice of a, a block that is made of the liquid that is coming from the breast of the cow. This is not the process in our head. What we are thinking is that I like this deep fermented flavor. I like so much that it's like melting in my mouth and it's, it's almost sinfully, uh, fatty and it becomes like almost like I can feel cheese running in my veins. That's what we love. So this can be recreated easily in a vegan way. How? Cheese is going through fermentation. You can ferment literally anything. Some of the easiest options, for example, are uh, soaking sunflower seeds. If you would go on a vegan, popular vegan blog, you would see cashew nuts. Cashew nuts are the the main ingredients for vegans for cheese, but it's not very sustainable and it's very expensive. So I use sunflower seeds, the cheapest seeds anywhere. You can buy piles of them and you soak it, you ferment it. You can actually buy in any pharmacy um, a little uh, uh, pill that is used for uh, making cheese to start the fermentation process. And it starts to ferment and Later on, you vary it in millions of ways. You can add dill, you can add garlic, I would always add garlic. Uh, you can uh, wrap them in uh, chili or, uh, or peppers, really it's endless variety of creating vegan cheeses. On a boutique range hotel, I think this is very, very much possible. And in the wider scale, when we are talking about uh, resorts and, uh, and really all-inclusive hotels, for example, well, you can order as well pre-made uh, vegan cheeses, especially here in Greece. There are uh, Nistissimo uh, cheeses everywhere. So just keep it in mind, even if you're not planning to change, uh, to uh, offer a very complicated vegan meal, I think it's very nice for the, the guests if the plant-based cheese is also an option for them. Let's move on with the pictures. Right next to the salad, you can see a spread. So 
most of the breakfast places and also we can talk about now lunch and dinner as well would say we are offering yogurt for example or uh, some sort of a uh, cream cheese everybody loves these uh, creamy textures we really um, we are hooked loving spreads but why could they not be for example hummus why could they uh, not be if you are talking about already about hummus which is chickpeas and tahini sesame seeds so why can't we mix that up and instead of chickpeas use for example green peas and change the sesame seeds to salted peanuts which is also a very very cheap option and you can vary this in any possible way you can use black beans instead of the chickpeas and add walnuts and it's going to become a completely different experience but each time absolutely delicious let's talk about um you know some people like to have like a piece of something on their plate and they uh, feel like they are missing meat because they they see a spread they see vegetables but they want this one piece of something there also not a problem you can very easily make uh, meatballs different sort of uh, slices like a schnitzel for example uh, you can with no problem make once again greeks uh, keftedes with so many different vegetables. What I'm us usually doing is that I'm taking one vegetable, which could be, for example, carrot, or it could be cabbage, and I'm starting to roast it, to really, really, really fry it with garlic and onion and spices. I get it to a texture that it's almost starting to melt. And at this point, I'm adding some uh, uh, ground nuts, which is great for the protein source. and. Uh, it's just building up into a sort of like a, a massive dough that you can roll into a, a little balls. And then it's up to you. You can fry them in oil if you really want to go uh, crazy and uh, indulge in uh, these kind. I love fried food, but I'm trying to keep my distance from it at, at my old age of 40. And, uh, and you can also decide that you are going to put them in the oven. And in this case, you don't even need to stand there and uh, watch it. It can just uh, get ready by itself. And then my favorite type of dishes, which are the traditional home cooked meals that happen to be vegan or which you can easily just, you know, take out one ingredient and uh, um, have it as a vegan friendly option. On the picture right here, what you can see is, uh, is a chulent, which is a very traditional uh, Jewish dish. And um, as you might know, uh, Jews uh, are eating uh, quite often, the religious Jews are eating kosher food, which mean, means they are not mixing milk with meat. And therefore, when they are going to a non-kosher place where everything is served together, the milk products, the dairy and the meat, so they have to eat um, vegetables because in their belief system it doesn't fit eating together the, the meat and the milk. So veganism is also a great way to actually have a, a kosher friendly uh, cuisine. And um, this dish is, uh, is actually from, um, from my uh, husband's uh, mom's kitchen. I really believe in family recipes and um, with my husband we are not only uh, partners in life but also in uh, in our business we are doing our cooking classes together and um, we are uh, coming up with menus together and um, if if you ever um, think of your parents favorite dishes your what your uh, grandparents used to make you will suddenly realize that there are so many vegan friendly dishes because the truth to be told a few decades ago, people didn't have the money and the possibility to eat meat all the time, like we used to do in the past few decades. It was really kind of like a new thing that uh, started after the, the Second World War, that, uh, that people suddenly felt like we suffered enough, now we want to live a life and we can allow ourselves anything what we want. And uh, humanity just switched to a diet which became meat-based but it wasn't like that uh, before and because of this you can very easily find uh, all family recipes that will uh, help you putting together your new updated menu 
And here I really want to emphasize something. So maybe by now you are going to think, okay, so this guy is talking about new dishes. He's talking about varying the menu. I'm going to have to bring in a new chef. How, how my chef is going to handle this? How, how it's not going to be an ego issue? How I'm going to explain why is this necessary? I'm, I'm, I really have a very, very good news for you. You do not have to let go of your chef. If you have a good chef, if you have a good chef, your current chef who is making all those meat dishes that uh, your guests love, they, uh, he or she easily can make vegan food with a little bit of a guidance, with reading up about it, with knowing specifically what is vegan. You know, uh, sometimes, for example, it can be really... Uh, minor small things that somebody doesn't know because they didn't read up about it or they or they didn't consult with the professional and uh, the chef would say this is completely vegan and it's even not sweetened with sugar there is honey in it what's the problem with that that honey is also coming from animals and vegans don't eat honey vegans don't eat anything that is a product of any sort of organized usage of animals okay so um once you get educated together with your chef and once you explain all these things that i talked uh, earlier about for example source of inspiration family recipes source of inspiration the cuisine of the country you're living in it will be a great adventure for the chef and there is not going to be any sort of uh, a big issue and the trouble. And I think the, the way you get to know how great is your uh, chef is if somebody can say, I can make food out of anything. That's how you know that a, a chef is really creative. What I'm usually saying on my classes is that Everything can be replaced with everything because we are going for textures and flavors. So I'm not, I'm not writing in, a, in our cookbook, we are not writing uh, five milligrams of coconut oil. I'm saying you need to add oil to it. Uh, obviously here in Greece, for example, when somebody makes a fava, the yellow split peas uh, cream, our hummus. So, uh, you know, you can read the recipe that says add three drops of olive oil. And I know uh, taverna owners who are actually putting in half a bottle of olive oil and they get it to the texture of like a mayo. And who am I to tell anybody how much oil they should have and use? It's for the chef's personal preference and about the concept of the of the restaurant. So once again, as I talked about the hummus, that you can replace the legumes and you can replace the nuts, uh, you can do this with so many different dishes. We talked about, for example, the cheese that uh, we would make them uh, from seeds. But in the same time, you can actually make cheeses out of root vegetables, white root vegetables that you can turn into an incredible fondue with adding some nutritional yeast, for example, that is a yeast which gives the fermented flavor, but it doesn't bloat you. So really uh, go for textures and flavors and everything can be replaced with anything, okay? I think the most problematic part of uh, turning a business vegan or vegan friendly is basically not exactly knowing who is your crowd which I'm not saying that anybody who hosts vegans need to turn vegan. I personally know lots of professionals who have um, fast food restaurants that are 100% vegan and the owners happen to be not 100% vegan. I know people who are um, uh, running uh, companies that are selling uh, ready-made dishes, pre-packed dishes. And in the same time, the same company in a different refrigerator is selling uh, meat uh, dishes. So it's not a mandatory to go vegan, but you do need to know your crowd. You do need to know who are these guests and what they actually want. And for this, I strongly recommend you 
to spend some online time discovering what the vegans want and what they are eating. Facebook groups are very, very good opportunities to do this. Nowadays, there is a Facebook group for everything, really. If you, if you would want to write, uh, you know, I don't know, uh, people who uh, likes in, if the sun is coming from this direction, you would find a group for it. So vegans really have billions of uh, groups. And once you go in, if you don't want, you don't even have to interact with them. First, you just watch them in their natural behavior. And, uh, and see what are the things that upsets them. See what are the things that uh, uh, they feel it's, uh, it was unfair or they were um, sort of tricked into a situation that they thought it's gonna be vegan friendly and it wasn't. See what kind of food they like. And uh, most importantly, uh, get to know that this is really not sort of a, a crazy new trend that people are trying to follow because they want to be cool and trendy because this is really the trigger for every vegan and we get it all the time and it's really not the case eating is one of the most important thing in a person's life we are making a choice every single day what we are going to eat and it gives us such satisfaction do you honestly think that for a fashion trend, somebody would be able to say, I'm going to restrict myself from one of the major joys in life? If somebody is actually going vegan, they have a pretty good reason for that. And we all need to respect that. Because this respect goes uh, both ways around. So I'm listing here three plus one very easy changes that you're going to go through if you decide to come with me on this journey. First of all, you are going to have to change your menu a little bit and uh, introduce new ingredients because uh, as I said, there are so many cheap, simple ingredients that are available everywhere that um, somehow most people just don't think that they could have in the kitchen. It so many times happens that uh, even the most simple things like let's say a mustard that uh, a, a, a kitchen is using or a soy sauce that the kitchen is using or even a, a margarine that is like supposed to be like a, a, a vegetarian butter but it happens to have milk powder. It happens to have a few drops of honey. It happens to have um, some sort of a, a weird fish essence or whatever. So it's very important to, first of all, take those dishes that are um, accidentally not vegan. They just happen to be not vegan. And uh, just to simply replace the ingredients in the kitchen that um, have these, um, little bad boys inside that uh, turn them into a non-vegan friendly uh, dish uh, ingredient. And here I have to mention and uh, admit that nearly all products say it may contain traces of egg or milk, but this doesn't make it non-vegan. It's still vegan. It just means that it was created in a factory or a manufacturer that is also producing non-vegan things. So this is not a problem if you see this on a, on a package and otherwise the ingredients are fine. There is no milk powder, no eggs, no meat, uh, no honey, so you're good, okay? Second step is to change your communication, which means you're going to take your um, Facebook, your Instagram, if you have a, a PR team, if you have a sales team, and you're going to create a, a vegan friendly atmosphere that is visible in your communication of your hotel, which means you can run a campaign, for example, uh, which means that you can uh, highlight it on the website that now we have vegan breakfast option. And um, when I'm saying in person, it's very important to mention it when the guests are checking in to really highlight the fact that there is an option of being plant-based because 
I know so many people who are on the, um, really on just the step before turning vegan and they mostly are vegans, but they say, oh, for the weekend, I have to go to this hotel. For sure, they don't have any vegan options. So I'm just gonna this time sleep. And they don't know that the hotel would be able to provide for them. So it's great to have this open communication about the fact that your cuisine is vegan friendly. And which I find the most important step is to offer support also to your team in the hotel and uh, of course also to your guests. Uh, the team is a very important aspect and we are going to speak a little bit uh, more about this because if we mentioned already a, a receptionist who didn't know if uh, it's okay to say to the vegan guests that there will be a, a breakfast option, but this can go wrong in so many situations. You can have a spa menu and offer a facial treatment. And when your vegan guest is already in the most wonderful comfort, getting hot stones on uh, her body or his body, suddenly they're going to find out that there is a hot honey being uh, put on their face or uh, donkey milk or whatever. This is why it's very important to involve everybody and to have sort of a training for all the staff to understand what is vegan, what's not, and to treat once again with respect the people who decided to go vegan. And the plus one is to keep the quality. Why I'm saying this? I'm saying it because I have lots of collaborations where I'm creating a dish or a, a few dishes, a complete vegan menu. And then obviously I'm not going back to this hotel the next morning to check if the breakfast is still good. But unfortunately, quite often, the hotel manager or uh, the, the chef also doesn't always check if everything is uh, right. And uh, half a year later, I go back to the same hotel and I'm ordering the menu that I put on the, on the table of the restaurant and I'm getting something completely different because it went through changes. There was a new kitchen staff and nobody checked the quality constantly. I used to have a food truck in Budapest uh, for two summers. Um, I, I have a, a burger that is on offer now in a, in a burger chain and I find it very important. I'm, I'm always reminding the people I'm working with, it's fun, it's joy, it's tasty. Taste the dish at least once a week to make sure that it's up to the right standards, okay? So let's talk a little bit more about this, what uh, I already started to uh, hint a little bit. How can you work together with vegan professionals who can, um, first of all, put your stuff on the right track to work with your employees, to work with your team, uh, and to attract the new guests? A few things that we are doing. So um, the probably the most simple and the most affordable way that there is not much to lose on is to do influencer collaborations. You can uh, look up people who are um, vegan influencers uh, on Instagram, on YouTube, on Facebook, on Twitter, on TikTok. And uh, you can just uh, say, I like this girl, I like this guy, I'm gonna invite them to my hotel. And uh, they, in this case, the people are not working closely together with your staff or uh, with you. You would just give them a room, they would enjoy your hotel, and they would uh, put up um, stories, posts, and maybe blog posts or vlogs, depending on your agreement about um, how was your hotel. And this is already a really, really great step. We are doing this quite often. You can find me on Instagram uh, under the name uh, Christoph Steiner. My uh, husband and co-chef is Nimrod Dagan, but anyway, you will see our contact by the end of the presentation. And you will see that I'm working with uh, companies that are introducing new vegan products. I'm working together sometimes with, uh, with hotels, with restaurants, with uh, bars, with cafes, in, uh, in this way that I'm actually not getting into the kitchen and I'm not getting that much involved. I'm coming there and I'm testing out what they have to uh, to offer us vegans 
and um, I bring the news to my fellow vegans. And then there is the second option, which is a bit more on the intimate side, when you allow me into your kitchen, and naturally, I'm giving myself just as an example, you have very talented, fantastic vegan professionals you can work with. If uh, you go online, I mentioned groups already, but you can use the hashtags to discover them. You can go to Instagram and uh, uh, check the hashtag vegan travel, vegan hotel, vegan influencer, lots of different options. And um, you'll find that there are people like me who can come into your kitchen, sit down with your chef and you, and think it through what your menu is missing. We might think that um, maybe just one vegan dish for breakfast is a good start, but maybe you wanna go further than that. And maybe you want to say, I want to have a nice variety of vegan dishes. And in this case, it takes a few days to uh, come up with a specific menu based on the ingredients you are already using, based on mostly seasonal and uh, accessible ingredients that we can bring into the kitchen without having to order from very special stores. And um, in this case, it's a very, very exciting journey because we create the dish. I'm giving um, all I can. Uh, I'm always very respectful with the chef because I know um, chefs uh, rightfully are very proud of the kitchen they are leading and I don't want to take anything away from that. I'm working with them and I'm not telling them what to do, how to do. And while we are creating the dish, we are working in a collaboration. And it's not that I'm saying this is wrong, this is right, this is how you should do it, okay? So this is, for example, one of my burgers. It's called um, All Day Breakfast Burger. It's with, uh, it's with a chunky hummus that in the Middle East we call it masabaha. It's with shakshuka, which is quite similar to briam. And it's, um, oh, I'm already again hungry. So it's a kind of a tomato sauce, uh, uh, roasted peppers, and uh, I love smoked paprika in it. That's where the Hungarian blood sneaks into the picture. And it's with fresh spinach. And once again, because it's a breakfast burger, it's with the chickpea omelet. But I already built a burger with the very popular Beyond Meat patties that are now um, everywhere also here in Greece. And um, sometimes I'm being asked to go towards the fine dining direction and not so much of the um, fast food uh, uh, style. And this is where we come to the third option of uh, this is really a bigger investment and um, you need to be a little bit more dedicated to the subject. And this is offering a full range of vegan programs for let's say first for a weekend and then you can extend it to five days, seven days or if it goes well, you can just keep on hosting uh, vegan guests constantly and offer them an incredible variety of programs. We are doing this quite often with different hotels. We have uh, collaborators, um, for example, one, one of our um, annual uh, programs that we are doing now, actually this year, if everything goes well and we can travel, uh, we are doing two times uh, two weeks uh, in uh, Toscany. And uh, we are coming, we have five cooking classes with uh, 20 people. We are taking them to uh, discover how olive oil is being made, how coffee is being roasted. We have a, a vegan uh, wine tasting. We are um, really building a program that it's, it's not just uh, something for the vegans to arrive into but to really involve them in because it's it's it can really attract a whole different kind of crowd and especially now when you might not be able to count on your usual crowd especially if it's business traveling um, if it's like a big family hotel where normally you would have uh, all, throughout the whole season uh, uh, families 
Now you have the chance to experiment and to try out what if the vegans in the country where you are running your business, they locally, if they can travel, they would be so happy to go to a safe place where they are considered and they have exciting programs. And in this, I'm going back again to the spa message because I also love being in the spa. So you can actually offer a vegan range of treatments there as well. So there is a next step to all of this. Now we know the basics, but variety is a very important aspect because even with the most incredible uh, vegan uh, burger or pizza or uh, uh, breakfast, Buddha bowl, whichever you have, if you have that one or two things, eventually the guests are going to get a little bit bored of it. Not, maybe not in the first stage, maybe not in the second, but then they will say, oh, we love this place, but let's go somewhere where there is a bigger variety. So I think that once you started your vegan journey with your business, you should consider widening the menu constantly, which means you would go with seasonal ingredients, you would pay attention on what the guests are saying, what's the feedback, what they say, I love this dish, but I do wish there was this and this and this. And um, you can do this gradually. You don't have to do this in the very beginning. If you want to, that's also very much uh, encouraged. I would say if you really want to have uh, a strong start, so it's great to have a, a variety also because of the nutrition, not, all, not only because of comfort reasons, because us vegans, we always need to pay attention on uh, having a, a nice colorful variety of uh, food. Quite often the vegan food is too much based on bread or um, different kind of carbs. And uh, we need to have our proteins, which is coming in our case from nuts and from beans, peas, uh, lentils. We need to have fresh uh, vegetables that are the highest in uh, vitamins. So we always need to have something really fresh that is not cooked. And in the same time, it's great to have root vegetables. It's, it's really a matter of putting together a menu where you rarely see the same ingredient returning on a two different dish. And here we arrive to the next point, which is sustainability. I know that this is a big issue and this is not always uh, connected with veganism because as I talked about it in the beginning, we can very easily have vegan ingredients wrapped up in a plastic foil and then it might be vegan, but it's not so um, environment uh, friendly. And uh, sustainability is now a very important calling uh, a word in, um, in all the industries, not only in the hotel industry. I'm 100% sure that you're going to hear sustainability and eco-friendly approach in nearly all the lectures, all the webinars that you are going to hear. So um, pay attention on this because we have one planet and we already pretty much ruined it. So now we, we all need to work on uh, saving it. And for example, getting seasonal ingredients and not uh, things that are actually in season at the other end of the world. To use things that uh, are not using uh, much um, uh, packaging, that's also a, a great uh, way. And sustainability is next step, which I love to do. And what we do in our um, uh, little uh, hospitality uh, business in Methana, where we live, a tiny little peninsula in, uh, in the Peloponnese. We live in a tiny village with uh, eight people uh, now at the winter time, actually now it's 10, sorry. And, um, and when I arrived, for me, it was so important to involve the locals. I think it's one of the most important thing in hospitality business that we need to understand that we are not rivals. We are all offering a different aspect of hospitality. And with me doing my cooking classes, I am 100% working together with all the other taverna owners and all the other people who are busy with the tourism and all the other people who are offering anything that my guests could enjoy. 
So sustainability is also to build a sustainable society where we all have something to eat, where we can all get to a next level of our business. And if we are doing it well, we can only help each other. I, I don't know what would I do without uh, the lovely families around us in Methana who are loving their uh, tavernas and the bakers and the winemakers. Really, for me, they are my family. They are not my rivals in any way, okay? And then the third aspect, which I a little bit hinted previously, is that veganism is not only about food. So we mentioned already the cruelty-free cosmetics. So for example, your vegan guest can come up to the room and wanting to sh take a shower and uh, they will find out that the little mini uh, shower gel that is out there is actually by a company that is testing on animals and it contains um, five percent, uh, I don't know, um, milk or cream or uh, honey or whichever of these. And um, then your guest is going to call the reception and uh, is going to say, can I have a, a bar of soap, please? Because I can't take a shower with this. So this is a very important aspect that if you are taking seriously your hotel being vegan friendly, so you need to check not just the ingredients of the kitchen, but also all the cosmetics that you are using, even the cleaning materials. And there are incredible cleaning materials nowadays that are eco-friendly, that are vegan. It's not those times anymore when, uh, when we say, no, this green uh, cleaning uh, stuff is just uh, patching up things, really. There is a huge variety of cosmetics, cruelty-free cosmetics, and now, I'm just going to mention it in a brief word because I don't want you to think that, okay, I need to redecorate the whole hotel. But there is also the aspect of the room, for example. It happened to us a few times that with my partner, Nini, we went into a beautiful hotel to do a collaboration together. And as we entered the room, suddenly we saw a huge cow's skin uh, carpet on the floor. And as a inviting it is for some people for us we are like <gasps> and uh, then we don't make a big deal out of it it's not that we are calling for the manager but we gently roll up the the cow and we put it under the bed and uh, i'm just here to tell you to pay attention on these things so i'm not saying you can't have any of these things in any of your rooms but have a few specifically vegan friendly rooms and in this case, also pay attention that the pillow, for example, is not with feathers, because clearly feather pillows are also not vegan. I told you this is the next step. So don't close the computer now and say, oh my God, this guy is crazy. I'm going to mention a few more things to consider. First of all, gluten-free is another very, very important aspect nowadays when you are talking about uh, hosting people. Lots of people are eating gluten-free. And if you are already going to make a change in your menu, so why not to consider your gluten-free guests as well? Our cookbook, which we recently uh, published, uh, is actually the, my first cookbook out of uh, four. Yeah, uh, that is 100% uh, gluten-free as well, because I learned it. It was, it was a lesson I went through that every single time I had a pop-up dinner, every single time I was hosting people for a cooking class, there were at least five people who wouldn't eat gluten. And then I had to come up quickly with a solution, which is also very fun, by the way. I love coming up with creative, quick solutions. But if we are just turning our vegan dishes to gluten-free dishes as well, so we won't have any of this trouble. And then from gluten-free, let's move on allergies. It's great if some of your dishes can be varied. So I, for example, mentioned earlier the, the omelette stand where the people can actually decide what they want in their omelettes. It's great because if somebody happens to be allergic to any sort of nuts or any sort of herbs, or maybe they are not even allergic that much, but they passionately hate coriander, for example. Uh, so, you know, you have to be able to tell your guests, no problem, of course, we're going to take care of you. So have a few of those dishes where 
some of the ingredients that are um, uh, allergens, they can be replaced upon request. And third, this is something that is really the next level, is the vegan-friendly alcohols. Unfortunately, not all alcohols are vegan. Uh, when, um, you know, there is the process of making the wine, for example, and there is the part where they are making the wine brighter. And for this, they quite often use a sort of a gelatin, which is uh, coming from uh, animal bone. And um, although they are filtering it afterwards, so you don't have to worry, there is no animal bone in your wine, but while this process is on, they are actually using animals, so it makes it uh, on paper non-vegan. Thankfully, nowadays, actually about 90% of the wineries already shifted to a new system because also it's more sustainable, it's uh, uh, more friendly to the guests who sometimes happen to be vegan, and it's also just a, a more modern Nowadays, we don't need animal bone to, to make the wine uh, brighter. But I do want to tell you, if you have a bar, if you are making cocktails, have it highlighted by the name of the cocktails, which one is vegan. And always have vegan friendly ingredients, not only in the restaurant, but also in the bar. Why? Because, for example, somebody could um, want um, a, a cocktail that is normally would come with uh, cream, let's say. Let's say somebody would want a white Russian, for example. And so you can have coconut cream and there they are happy. What is, wh who can be more happy than a, a tipsy vegan? I know it from my own experience. Okay, let's talk about making an entrance now that we are slowly, slowly running out of uh, time. Uh, how to make an entrance into the vegan world, how you're going to launch this new wonderful range of uh, vegan options that you came up uh, in your hotel. Well, first of all, as I said earlier, start it before you would introduce it to your guests. Start it with your team. Your team is going to be the key for you to be able to go on with this. And I wouldn't even just say, bring together a meeting and uh, formally tell them, okay, from today we are serving also vegan dishes. If you have any questions, let me know. No, actually bring together programs, make them understand what is veganism. For example, send them the link of this webinar. Uh, tell them that, uh, for example, you could invite a vegan professional and first of all, do a community cooking with the staff and try those vegan dishes to make them understand that this is going to be easy and fun. And there is a very, very good reason for it, both because there is a demand and also because it's nice to keep animals alive. The second step of making the entrance is um, to introduce it to your guests, which we already talked about social media and we already talked about vegan weekends and we are already talking about putting vegan uh, dishes on the menu that you're gonna advertise. But um, one of the best way to do this is a so-called pop-up dinner. So if you pre-sell tickets, and you're gonna say, we have a limited amount of seats for this dinner where we are going to first time introduce our vegan menu. It's definitely sold out because no matter which city you live at, there are always going to be vegans who are waiting for just this opportunity, an exciting vegan event where they will know the, the menu ahead of time, where they know that they can sign up and there will be definitely a seat for them. And uh, when I'm doing uh, pop-up dinners, it's really not only just dinners. We are, um, we are coming out uh, every single time when we are bringing the dish and I'm explaining each and every dish uh, what are they, how they are made, what was the inspiration, and people love it. They love to talk about food, they love to get new inspiration. And it's a little bit almost like a demo cooking class as well, because they get to know the ingredients and they can recreate them at home. And um, the big entrance is what I already uh, mentioned, 
Uh, we can, uh, we can, for example, for limited amount of guests with uh, special menus, I would bring up a few ideas like, for example, you can have um, late night snack room service uh, kit that the vegans can get, pampering experiences, uh, may they be uh, connected to nature or again, I'm going to say spa. So these are a few very good way, ways to uh, really enter the, the vegan scene. And before, really way before you would do anything, just go into it and really think it through. Think through all the things that you heard. Don't believe a single word I said to you. Don't think that I'm trying to sell you something. Don't think that I'm trying to convince you about anything. Just think through all the things you've heard and let it work in your head for, um, for a night or for a few days. And um, if you feel like this is the right uh, decision for you, so you can invite a vegan professional, may it be me, may, it be, uh, may they be us, or may they be anyone else, because again, there are so many of them. There are incredibly inspiring people who are uh, really, I'm working very often with other um, uh, cooks, chefs, influencers, and uh, we love to create things together. And we actually really support each other because our common goal is for veganism to be much more accepted and, uh, and normalized. And on top of that, the main reason is actually uh, keeping animals happy and uh, giving them back the right to, uh, to exist in uh, health, happiness and joy. There is no reason why not to try any of this really. The, I, I can't think of anything to say, why is it a bad idea? It's not gonna be expensive. It's not gonna be complicated. It's not gonna take much time away from you. So just really, as I said, think it through and be very, very patient and be curious while you're communicating with vegans. Also, because I talked about the respect, but also me as a vegan, I'm always very curious and patient when I'm communicating with non-vegans, because there will always be, if you decide that you're going to go for this and you're going to offer vegan options, you are going to tell this to, let's say, um, the deputy manager and is going to say rubbish we shouldn't do it nobody cares about vegans anyway animals are here to slaughter them maybe somebody's going to say this and in this case you have to take a deep breath and you're going to say i really understand where you're coming from because i'm uh, i i also thought just like you do but the world is changing and look and really a patient and very much rational and emotional communication is required if you want to go through with this okay and um, it's really something that most people forget that great leaders are born out of great followers you cannot be a very good leader if you don't know what your crowd wants so if you really want to be the best in the job you're doing, you really have to accept the fact that, that we are here, the vegans are here, and we are not going anywhere, okay? Well, I guess that's it for now. And uh, obviously, you can ask your questions. I'm pretty sure that uh, you have a few in mind. And um, to close all of this, I just want to say that once again, I'm eternally grateful that you listened to me, that you uh, decided to take your time and, uh, and share this lovely morning with me. I would like to thank you to uh, Nikos and to Anastasia and the whole Hotelier Academy. And um, I just want to remind you the very first uh, uh, slide that I showed you, please don't be afraid of change. Change is coming, change is always here, change is the only thing that is constant in our lives. And this is not only true about the, the vegan approach, this is true about the sustainable approach. 
And it's even true about this very, very strange situation we are in right now, that normally I would stand in front of you in real life, and after this uh, webinar, we would maybe toast with the champagne and we would chit chat, but now there is a big change upon us, on humanity, and we always have to take out the best of what we have. There is always a hidden opportunity in the difficulty, okay? Thank you so much for being with us and let's try to go vegan. <laughs> Christoph, thank you very, very much for this amazing presentation. And I have, to, I have to say that I was looking forward for this uh, webinar, but now I have to declare three things that I am excited, I'm inspired, I, and I'm very, very, very hungry. And oh, I'm so I glad to hear that. I really enjoyed it as well. It was amazing. Yeah, I really enjoy it. And I really believe that people enjoyed all this information because we need change, a change to our hotels. We need to, to offer more complete experiences for all the people. And uh, offering vegan options, it's not only for the vegan people, are for also for the rest people that they also eat uh, meat, but they want to make a break or they want to try more things or they want to experiment with vegan meat because for example uh, there it would be a great opportunity to try a really good quality of vegan food and as you mentioned we don't need just vegetables we need real vegan recipes it's the same thing with the local uh, recipes we don't need just local products. We need recipes. This is the, the clue. Uh, let me share uh, your Instagram account because I, I would like to invite people to- uh, oh, Thank you so much. At Instagram and follow you because you have a great Instagram account. And I think that there they will find ton of inspiration. This is how uh, I found uh, Christophe. I was uh, just uh, in my Instagram account and I found Christophe, his Instagram, and they said, <laughs> oh, that's amazing. I there should follow I am. him. And Thank you so much. Right. I really appreciate that you, you are saying that because I really uh, consider my Instagram not just a social media platform. Uh, it's uh, especially these times when it's difficult to meet one-on-one -on -one with people. It's... Um, it's the place where we are meeting at. It's also in a way uh, um, a menu of uh, all the things that we are offering. And in the very same time, it's definitely uh, a little bit of a business card. So I think uh, this could be a whole different uh, webinar about, uh, about social media, but uh, it's so important to, uh, to do it with the heart and the soul and not only with the rational mind. So this is this will be your next webinar, I think, Christophe, next okay. year. So <laughs> about social media. So it was really, really amazing. I loved your uh, webinar. And if we travel to Methana, we can we try your cuisine somehow? If we travel, to yes, Metana? absolutely. I would love you to visit because Methana is a very, very exciting hidden spot. We really don't get much uh, tourism there. Um, if you would ever look up Metana as a, as a foreigner, you would find out that once there was a really glamorous uh, uh, bath with the uh, volcanic sulfur water, but sadly with the recession, uh, it, it's closed. And Metana is a little bit forgotten, but I can very honestly say with being in all around Greece, I've been to so many different islands and uh, the olive oil, the wine, and the home cooked meals in Methana are out of this world because the, the locals are still really, we say hello to everybody. There is a, in the morning you go out and you go, Yasu, Yasu, Kalimera. And it's really <laughs> full of uh, very, very special closeness, togetherness. So uh, I do uh, invite everybody to Methana. We live mm -hmm. in Ayos Georgios, which is a, very little village by the sea. And uh, we have a, a website, which is uh, christophandnini.com. You will also receive it uh, with your PDF of uh, my uh, webinar. 
and you can see all the different programs we are doing, the way we are collaborating with the locals, with the farmers, with the winemakers, and um, obviously you can request one-on-one -on -one cooking classes or just come and uh, have a kilo of wine because here in Greece, in the countryside, we have kilo of wine and not liter. And, okay. uh, and go up for a hike to the incredible volcano or enjoy the sulfur baths. I think Methana is really paradise. <laughs> Perfect. We, we will visit you. And of course, many of the hoteliers that follow Hotelier Academy will contact you, to you because they need to add vegan dishes in their menus. Thank you, Christophe. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, uh, all the Thanks hoteliers all over the world because we have people from Rome, from France, even from Thailand. And wow. We are, very, we are very glad to have hoteliers from all over the world. I'm so, so happy to hear that. Let's renew our uh, meeting for next year for a different session. And uh, thank you very much, everybody. Thank for, you so uh, much. Thank you, guys. Really, it's been an honor. Have a lovely, beautiful day and see you soon, I hope.